the global economy is largely dependent on fossil fuels for its day-to-day -day functioning. You know, how many houses do you know that don't need some access to fossil fuels to stay warm in the winter? The divestment movement, as I've seen it grow over the last few years, has been largely related to removing money out of institutions or out, it, removing investment money out of institutions that have uh, a, a significant role in fossil fuel extraction. It's it's really hard when you're looking at climate change. It's this massive, massive issue, right? And it's connected to everything. Um, it's like, you know, trying to change the food industry. I mean, we all eat every single day. We all use fossil fuels every single day. Now, specifically divestment, um, it just kind of makes sense, right? So instead of having it this, be this theme of Phipps divesting, uh, Pitt, Chatham, you know, and then the Thomas Merton Center at the city, why not just make the tone divest Pittsburgh? The Fossil Free Pit Coalition represents um, over 30 other student organizations, ranging from uh, like the club rugby teams to um, United Students Against Sweatshops and Free the Planet. Um, so a bunch of different student organizations and uh, they just support our work uh, in divestment. The Orange Square is just the international symbol for fossil fuel divestment. Um, campaigns all around the world have these orange squares, so it's just a way to identify other divestment supporters. In 2014, uh, in the fall, um, a bunch of us from Free the Planet took a bus to New York City for the People's Climate March, and there was uh, like 400,000 people there, um, and it was really exciting, and it was super energizing. That really inspired a lot of us Pitt students who went to the People's Climate March to come back and do something moving forward with all that momentum, and divestment was a really, like, cool idea that a lot of the people at the march were kind of pushing forward so we thought that starting a campaign at Pitt would be beneficial. Divestment from fossil fuels is important because the foss fossil fuel and other extractive industries have impacted my community um, in the past. It's a historical coal mining community about an hour south of here. So for example I grew up around a lot of coal ash dumps and mining entrances. There's a part of my town still called Shaft, um, after like the Shaft entrances. And um, it's both impacted people economically, sort of this cycle of large companies coming in and employing a lot of people, and then those people being left whenever that the economy of that um, specific corporation collapses. I think divestment is symbolic. It's really important because it's aligning your investments with your values and your morals. It's still creating this stigma and it's shaping public opinion and um, in order to create social change you need the public support behind the movement. You know as an activist this is something that I strongly believe in but you're also dealing with other people's money and other people's retirement which is extremely important. Specifically people who work for the city and will probably work for the city for most of their life. So that being said, I think it's really important to include those people in this conversation. Part of the reason why people are resistant to divest is because they feel like, well, it would be a hit to the regional economy. Um, you know, all these jobs related to fossil fuel extraction and burning would, would go away. Until we decouple our industrial strength from our carbon dioxide emissions, um, we'll never have any legitimate long-term opportunity in the Pittsburgh region. When you sign the Thomas Merton Center divest petition, what your basically what our main stance is to pull in the next five years out of all the top 200 oil, coal, and gas companies, and immediately freeze all new investments in the top 200 coal, oil, and gas companies. Um, we also strongly consider that reinvestment be part of something that's a little bit more progressive. Uh, and in our legislation, we wrote to have a uh, panel made up of city employees as well as people in the public to decide where to reinvest that. To me, it's what's fulfilling. It's what makes me happy to know that I'm a part of something um, bigger than me that's impacting society in such a positive way. 
we might be the last generation to really do something about climate change. The way that we look at investments uh, is more from a social perspective, that we should be investing in things that are good for communities, we should be investing in solutions, we shouldn't be investing in an industry that has to end in order for human life to continue in any kind of normal way. It allowed me to be able to be a part of something bigger that I could bring back to Pitt's campus and share that with other people. My university is an international player now um, and I would like it to set an example um, for large endowments that do not perpetrate or continue that um, extractive system on communities like mine. You know, there are people that are poisoning and killing the earth and they have names and they have addresses. So I think that for, for me looking at divestment, it's a specific connection to climate change and the industry that's causing it. If I was responsible for the retirement savings of thousands and thousands of people, I couldn't imagine what I would say to them down the road after these investments have been obliterated by the moral necessity to cut our ties to fossil fuels, what would I tell them? What would I tell their families that, oh, I didn't see this coming? Of course you saw it coming. Every climate scientist in the world virtually says that we've got to cut our carbon emissions and fast. In fact, we all know that we've got to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere if we want to have a chance at a livable climate in the future. What part of that do you not understand from a business investment perspective? That there is no future in burning carbon dioxide. When you divest, as you say, we morally, socially, and economically do not want to support this industry.